Perfect. I'll just cut to the chase. And not because I can't seriously think of a good transition into the video whatsoever, this TikTok has been floating around. I said what I said, rather make him famous instead. Won't let all that get to my head. It's all about the blood that he shed. Mm, see the devil, he don't make me flinch, I won't settle. She put a foot to the pedal. It gon' take a whole lot to be a vessel. And people are smelling a really smelly smell. A smell that smells smelly. And, um, that's cringe. <laughs> that's cringe wafting through the air into our little nostrils. We have the TikTok comment classics, like, and the crowd went home. Yo, turn it down. This is fire. <laughs> Put it out. The building's gonna burn down. Is it the way she dances? Is it the facial expressions? Is it this? Just to be clear, this video is through the lens of my own beliefs and they are just my opinions. I grew up in the Catholic Church, I was in the choir, I've done my CCD, I grew up going to my friends' churches often, non-denominational, regular-ass Christian, Baptist, and rock and roll church, mega churches, gospel churches, I've been to them all. I used to work at a church, that was my job. A previous relationship I had was with someone who was evangelical Christian. I am not coming from a place of malice or hatred, I'm simply analyzing a trend and my opinions on such trend. Anyway, I will be poking fun at these uh, videos, so sit tight. So this song by Doja Cat in particular got Christians a little bit upset. A little bit upsetty spaghetti, a little tickle in the wrong place. Because the phenomenon of Christian covers of popular music, for those unfamiliar, yes, this is a common thing. It's not just a one-time thing. But the phenomenon of Christian covers isn't just like all pop music or any pop song that's out there. It's pop songs that specifically have any semblance of the word devil or any single little bit of ounce of reference to Christianity or religion or religious figures or religious symbolism, which partially explains why everyone thinks it's annoying and cringe. So I'm here to sit you down and armchair psychoanalyze and get to the bottom of why Christian versions of songs in particular are so cringe. Wow, she said the thing. Oh my god, she said the thing. She's so she cool. She just said the title of the video. Oh, she's so cool. But before we do that, it's time to hear about Raid Shadow Legends. That's right. Did you ever see that one coming? It's a rite of passage. It's tradition. Okay. It's time for Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is an awesome free-to-play RPG with beautiful graphics. It's one of the first things I noticed while playing and really helps immerse you into the story. Raid Shadow Legends is increasing its roster of awesome looking champions with a brand new rarity, Mythical. A step above legendary champions, these new Mythical champions have a special new mechanic called Metamorph that allows them to change between two different forms. Uh, kind of like when I transform out of public social Gabby to at home slob kebab video game Gabby. <laughs> Mythical champions are basically two champions in one. Change between forms with unique metamorph skills. You can summon these awesome mythical champions from brand new red primal shards in the portal. These mythical champions are the most versatile champions you have ever seen in raid. And you can tailor your playstyle and create synergies across both forms. I do really like raid's take on the monkey king from Chinese mythology, Sun Wukong. He's made his grand appearance in the game and it couldn't be easier to get him. Just log in on seven different days between now and October 23rd to get your hands on them. Get your grubby little hands on them. It's that easy. With all this exciting stuff and more coming to raid, if you haven't started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? Use my link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen to get insane bonuses. We are talking an epic champion, Talia, and other useful things. Thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. And back to the video. The war against devil pop music has always been at play. It's This isn't New. The crusade against music in particular has always been a pain point for Christians for throughout time. I don't know the true origin of this anime lore, but Christians were always at the forefront of protesting devil music and Dungeons and Dragons and Pokemon. But music, music, we're talking about music today. From the 1950s emergence of rock and roll to Lil Nas X iconically pole dancing his way to hell to give the devil a lap dance, there was always a flock of Christians outspoken in protest. But so the newest thing is that they turn sinful songs into songs that praise Jesus instead. And like technically it's not really hurting anyone unless you count experiencing secondhand cringe as a crime. But when it's mainly only targeted at songs that have references to Christian and symbolism, it becomes tired and like, oh, here we go again, everyone. She's doing it again. We're doing this again. 
It is again. So Paint the Town Red by Doja Cat has really been making the rounds lately for her line in the song where she goes, Mmm. She the devil. She a bad little bitch. She a rebel. <laughs> That's the line. That's the line that sparked this. The music video, she really doubled down on the sinful imagery, but the song here is what we're gonna focus on. I love how we have the image of a rendered Jesus there. Just so we're absolutely clear who we're talking about here. There is no room for subtlety. Mm, she the devil, she a bad little bitch, she rather be in hell than alone. Cause tonight I'm making deals with the devil and I know it's gonna... And in a minute, I'm in a poe, and making a sell of my soul. And hey, it's me from the future to add additional comments. Pay no mind to the outfit change or the man bun that makes it look like I'm about to order an $8 coffee. I know for the most part, it is just not that deep. Nothing I make videos on is really that deep, but I really want to analyze the origins of this trend, like psychologically, why and how these came to be, and why people are so adverse to them. So, that being said, you can take someone else's artwork and interpret it in your own lens, but some Christian versions come off in such a condescending light, and that's the big difference to me. Do you not have other evils in the world to worry about than a pop song that frankly has no influence over the actions of the person Person that listens to it, especially when this lyric and like all these lyrics in this TikTok are all metaphors. She's so bad, she a rebel. She's so bad, she's a devil. Do they know that just saying the word devil isn't going to summon him in your bathroom mirror at 3 a.m.? He's not Voldemort. You can say it. Mmm, she the devil. She deals with the devil. And if there's one thing I learned from Christianity is that the devil can't hurt you simply by saying his name. It just feels like a choosy thing to get upset at. Taking a demonic song and making it for Jesus. Yeah, God, he said what he said. Follow his word or you will be dead. Especially when these songs don't worship the devil. 99% of the time in popular music, devil motifs and visualizations are simply hyperboles and metaphors for something else entirely in society. And people who say, Well, that's what they want you to think so they can integrate devil propaganda into society. I think we'd be getting into conspiracy theories. Like so many other pop songs, my interpretation of Paint the Town Red is the tired motif of selling your soul to the devil for fame. It's nothing more than that. It's not propaganda or devil worship. Do you actually think Doja Cat is sitting in her $5 million basement setting up satanic rituals and shit? I don't think so. I just killed my ex, I still love him though. Rather be in hell than a- As a Jesus loving person, were Chill saying you killed your ex? Killed his new girlfriend too? But when she says she'd rather be in hell than alone, that's too far. We've crossed a line. Like it's become a caricature of itself at this point. Like this doesn't mean anything if you're singing about murder just fine, but as soon as the word hell pops up, that's too far. It's just too much. Like what is that doing for you morally? Her saying she'd rather be in hell than alone is an obvious hyperbole. Guys, I don't think SZA actually wants to go to hell. Just a thought. This happened in the last TikTok too. Rather be in hell than a I'm all for doing and listening to whatever makes you feel more comfortable, but at some point you just gotta look in the mirror and be like, what am I doing? Does this actually matter to anyone? Cause last time I checked your destiny to lose. That's right. That devil's a liar. Yeah, he's a liar. That cat is catching fire. Something else I've noticed, like with Christ Spice over here, and if you haven't noticed it already, <laughs> all the lyrics to these remixes are- I'm sorry, Christ Spice got me. All the lyrics to these remixes are the same recycled words, phrases, and messages just written over and over again. Satan don't know, God is on a job, gathering up the squad, doing something so holy. But the devil is cap, trying to be smooth, but I know where he's at. Yeah, he just mad, prowling on me because he losing real bad. Say the devil, he don't make me 
lunch, I won't settle. It's just generic lyrics about God that frankly don't mean much to anybody. You're just making it a Christian song just because. A long time I was sad until he rescued me. There's not really a purpose. Is this really serving God to you? Because to me, you're just serving cringe on a platter. And nothing is worse than cringe. The devil's energy mess with your head. That's when my Jesus called me happy feet. And like all these do is just make the song feel watered down, generic. And I know that Christians can write good music. Some of the remixed lyrics aren't bad at all. I'm so on fire for you. I pull up three, four times again. I testify for you. No telling lies up in this track. I do what all of them around me scared to do. I'm not. No one's just like now here for me. I got it. I found this remix to be really cool. And like this person is outspoken about her being a fan of SZA. And the way she phrased her video, if SZA made a Christian song, comes off as a fan. Not putting down SZA's music or messaging to make room for a more holy version. So there's a theme here. <laughs> Unholy by Sam Smith and Kim Petras caught this trend. SZA caught it for Kill Bill. Hello Christ? I'm about to sin again. Hello Christ? I'm about to sin again. That one and the Doja Cat song, whatever. But these are the songs that have recently caught victim to these Christian remixes. So let me highlight some good Christian songs that I personally like, that I think have meaningful lyrics specific to one's experience. There's My Life Be Like, Ooh Ah by Grits and Toby Mac. That song's an oldie but a goodie. It's cool. There are great country songs, one I actually saved a month ago, but I can't, I can no longer find. There are these Brazilian songs that I really like. Uh, you know, we have Skillet. They can't keep their chains on me. So the next big song that's caught this trend, um, Unholy. Who we have, oh, you should know hell is hot. So you ought to stop. And go do something holy. You get the gist. I think we know exactly what lyrics this song is going to have, so I don't think we need to listen much further. It's just not that interesting as music when all the remixed songs have the same lyrics. I'm sorry. I said what I said. I know this can happen in every genre, but it's just so niche here that I feel like I have to call it out and talk about it. Let me guess. Reference a Bible story. A lyric that definitely doesn't fit there in the phrasing. Lyrics that don't rhyme, but you definitely also can't pull it off because it just sounds weird. Christ, I just sinned again, but I'm so thankful that you died and that you rose again. You love your grace, your mercy, you know it's so evident. Me and the spirit, we in sync just like a pop band. Yeah. I love how they're going at like a light jog when the trend is supposed to be funny and ridiculous at a full sprint. There is more to Christianity in music than just singing about the anime battle between God and the devil and how God lifts you up and how he's good. There is more substance to be had there. I just know it. This comment jumped out at me from the unholy video. This is amazing. Turning an evil song into something Christian without being cringe or cheesy is quite the talent. Evil song? Evil music? This song is telling a story about something that everyone knows is bad and they're calling it unholy. Sam and Kim, we they know. Like I think we're all on the same side as the thing here. It just feels like some of these Christians will hear anything. The word unholy, the word devil, the word and it just becomes a vessel of anger for the other. So much so that they feel like that they just can't resist but turn it into a corny Christian song. I don't know if you saw, but I made a cheesy little remix to it because I couldn't stand that song. Just skip it. Just skip the song. Why don't people take Christian songs and turn them into secular music? Because you can just enjoy the song as is. And if you don't like it, Skip it, just like everyone else does. If you start treating music and art like this, where if it doesn't perfectly align with your worldview just by simply saying a word you don't like, so you go out of your way not to listen to it or experience or hear those stories, you start existing in these echo chambers that you think the rest of the world lives in, and you start to lose touch with the rest of the world. Now we have this. Just what happened to music being about sharing your experience and connecting with people and inspiring people. What is this supposed to do? What is this supposed to do? Uh, to answer your questions, the first point, uh, the song is literally about her experiences, like a one-to-one, -one, like it's objectively about her own experiences. Uh, secondly, what is this supposed to do? 
It's supposed to evoke emotion. Did it evoke emotion? Maybe you should think about that a little more. Maybe sit in it. Art isn't always meant to be agreeable and something that makes you evoke joy. Thirdly, she asks this question, what happened to music being about XX and whatever and inspiring people? Um, when? When? Cause I, you know, the songs from back then aren't, you know, they're not nice, you know? A lot of them aren't nice, okay? I don't know what you mean by that. Once again, to be absolutely clear, there is indubitably, objectively, massive talent in the church. When I think of some of the most talented singers I've ever heard live, I think of the Christian church. Some of the most beautiful songs I've heard have been in the Christian church. So once again, I'm just trying to analyze and critique this trend overall and not the people who are doing it. There are Christian songs out there that are great. We just don't always notice them because they're not so on the nose about everything in the song. Not that they have to be subtle about it for it to be good, but over explaining the meaning in any piece of artwork in any medium for any subject is just going to come off as corny and overdone. There's a similar issue in Christian movies as well, where the themes of the film are so incredibly obvious that it doesn't allow the viewer to enjoy the movie at their own artistic interpretation and have it mean something to them because the movie is constantly telling you what to interpret and how to interpret it. It's such a stereotype that this exists and I love it. Who is this Jesus guy? I'm not listening to someone who only has 12 followers. Loser alert. Hey freaky Jesus girl, I bet Jesus won't save you from my bullying. No gospel music, but I like the sinful music of the Beatles. Okay Jesus girl, riddle me this. If God is so good, then why is my dad away on business so much? It leaves no room to the imagination or have the viewer come to the conclusion themselves that say, God is good and will always prevail, that they came to this conclusion themselves. It doesn't feel as good when the message is being spoon fed to you in such an obvious manner. Like this movie where the actual plot is that Christianity is illegal. I can get all the phone numbers of the Christians if I hack the police. Or this movie where, ugh. I hate God. That's why when you notice it, these non-subtle pieces of Christian media always feel like propaganda and less like a piece of art to express how much you love God. And Christians watching this might not understand that or even notice it or wonder why being obvious about it is even a bad thing in the first place. It's not. Because it's either the media that they've just consumed their whole lives or are just more involved in this lifestyle than the regular secular person. Instead of feeling inspired or left with a good message, at times it can just feel like you're being shoved in ideology down your throat when it's something that you just can't force on people. And like I said, being obvious about your beliefs isn't automatically bad. That's not what I'm trying to say. Songs like Follow Your Arrow by Casey Musgraves, Musgra I'm sorry, and Never Grow Up by Taylor Swift are incredibly on the nose about the message in the songs, but it feels more like they're sitting me down to tell me a story rather than trying to forcefully tell me what I should believe. But being over explainative is a huge theme in Christian music and movies and media in particular that almost self-isolates them from everyone else. If a lot of Christian media is so obvious and taken at face value like this, it makes sense of the backlash Lil Nas X got for pole dancing his way to hell to kiss the devil. You know he doesn't actually worship the devil and isn't telling people to worship the devil, right? I will say, this remix in particular is incredible. When them sins try to get at you, drop it off to God, drop it off to God, drop it off to God. When and maybe this forcefulness stems from churches encouraging you to spread the word of God, which you can view as a good thing. But what pastors usually fail to specify, in my experience, is how. And it's not being aggressive or looking down on other people's music or artwork or forcing your friends to come to church or else you don't really want to hang out with them. In my firsthand experiences, these people people end up in vicious cycles of only spending time with other people who share the exact same ideologies as them. You know, as we all do at times, but especially so in the church, I think it's healthy to have friends from all walks of life and with different opinions and ideologies. But so, especially in the church, where there are plenty of rules, spoken and non-spoken, that make it difficult for people to sympathize and not view Christian versions of songs as annoying and unnecessary, when no one else does it back. Especially when there are so many other evils in the world that are just 
simply more important than Doja Cat. There are more evils worth losing sleep over than spending your actual human life hours being upset at a song and then remaking that song in the lens of your beliefs and then parading it around as some holy endeavor. I don't know if you saw, but I made a cheesy little remix to it because I couldn't stand that song. Then don't listen to it. How would you feel if someone took your original Christian song and mutilated the message and made it about committing sins? You wouldn't want that. I'll do it. I'll make your song about committing sins. I'm pretty sure joking about how drunk you're gonna be during a hurricane is a sin. Getting drunk is a sin. But hey, I'm saying you can sin away, girl. I think you should be able to enjoy some wine and mixed fabrics, you know what I'm saying. You can listen to music. It's okay. Especially how these Christian versions always fail to disregard the actual meaning and symbolism of the song while completely missing the mark. The way that these Christian remixes are framed, they're like, the original is the sinful version. Look how, how stupid and sinful this one is. It's not good. Not good. Here's my worship version that's clean and much better to sing along to for Christians. Like you're taking someone else's artwork and instead of respecting it like covers usually do, you're changing it to fit a moral narrative while simultaneously putting down the original song that you are now profiting off of. I just don't think that makes a whole lot of sense. If you're gonna cover a song, at least respect the source material. Taking a song that wasn't targeted at you and doing this is very, but what about me is um performance. It would be a lot more meaningful if these people focused their energy into making impactful original tracks that break into the mainstream, like ooh ah, instead of taking someone else's music and copy pasting generic Christian lyrics in there. There's a reason people aren't connecting to that. It's kind of like an extension of Christian music service on Sundays where the lyrics aren't nuanced and they're easy to follow along to sing along with. That's kind of what it feels like. I just think it would be more fun if they got a little more creative with it and made a cheeky little call and response response type of thing, not simply just inserting generic Christian lyrics, which is why it comes off the way that it does, just kind of tone deaf and uncreative, instead of a clapback or a creative addition to the song. If such a big part of Christianity is wanting to spread the word of God to people who don't know him, remixing popular songs to spread the word isn't it. And doing it in a condescending manner on top of that isn't going to bring people to God. It's pushing them away. It's content by Christians for Christians, which ends up making the community pretty gatekeepy and unwelcoming. Can't you see you're not making Christianity better? You're just making rock and roll worse. Criticisms aside for just one second, um, this one is one of my favorite ones. Got Bible study on my roster, cause Jesus fills me like pasta. I just love the thought of Jesus filling me up like pasta. What do you want for dinner? Let's see, we have falafel, leftover beans, just beans, Jesus, broccoli. What was before broccoli? Jesus? We could have some Jesus chicken. Like Jesus chicken Alfredo? Yeah, or church's chicken. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, cool. So on one hand, it's really not that serious at all. It's completely fine to do a cheeky little Christian remix of a popular song for your church and your followers. Like, it's really not that deep. And on the other hand, some of them are pretty holier than thou, and it's clear that it stems from a place of judgment and righteousness, and that's where I personally kind of draw the line. It's gonna be different for everybody, but it's really not that serious. So that's been my analysis of why Christian versions of songs are so cringe. Wow, she said the thing. Oh my god, she said the thing. She's so She cool. just said the title of the video. Anyway, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. Thank you, patrons. Bye.